U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee hearing there on the nomination of Suffolk County DA uh, Rachel Rollins. We do want to check in now with uh, WBZ and CBSN political analyst John Keller just to kind of break down for us what we just witnessed, John. Yeah. Uh, that was about an hour or so long, so if you can just kind of give us the, the quick and dirty on it. Well, you know, straight partisan performance in terms of the vote. Uh, uh, there's 22 members on the committee half Democrats, half Republicans. They split along straight party lines. Now it'll go on to the Senate floor and she will be the next U.S. attorney from Massachusetts because the Democrats control the Senate. So, uh, however, what you saw today by demanding a roll call vote, uh, which uh, is the first roll call vote on a U.S. attorney nomination in the Senate Judiciary Committee in 30 years, what the Republicans are doing is setting the stage for using the confirmation of Rachel Rollins as the U.S. attorney as a political weapon to bludgeon the Democrats with in the midterms coming up, uh, down the road, you name it. Uh, there, for, for viewers old enough to remember the name Willie Horton, Willie Horton was a convicted murderer sitting in a Massachusetts prison in 1988 uh, who oh, was let out under a furlough program backed by then Governor Michael Dukakis, who was running for president. And the Republicans latched on the fact that while he was out on a furlough, uh, Horton raped and assaulted uh, a, a, a couple of people down in Maryland. He was recaptured. He's serving a life sentence in jail. But they ran ads depicting Dukakis as presiding over a revolving door in which uh, uh, criminals of color were rotating through, a revolving door. This is exactly what the Republicans have in mind for the Rachel Rollins nomination. They're going to Willie Hortonize it, and uh, they're going to turn her record here in Massachusetts as an anvil to hang around the necks of Democratic candidates going forward. Our democracy in action, Brianna. We heard from uh, Tom Cotton, Senators Cotton, Senators Kennedy, and then Ted Cruz, who spoke for the longest there at the very end, and they right. kept referring to her as a pro-criminal right. radical. I believe the term was. So what do you make of that? Obviously, that was all tactical to be able to keep using that term radical. Well, you know, this is something that's been uh, a very uh, successful political weapon for the Republicans and for the right wing in this country, going back to last year's elections where they slid the, the uh, unfortunately chosen slogan, defund the police. Mm, yeah which very few people of any political persuasion support the notion of, that was used uh, as, a, as a weapon against Democratic candidates to great success. It played a role in keeping the margins so close in, in the U.S. House and, uh, and, and uh, beating a number of Democratic House candidates. So now, uh, so you see in the rhetoric from Cotton, Cruz, et al., you know, extreme radical, uh, pro-criminal. I mean, this is nonsense. Uh, uh, Rachel Rollins uh, supports decriminalizing certain offenses and treating the offenders with either restitution policies or rehabilitation. And these are policies that were supported by the conservative DA who preceded her, Dan Conley, and by DAs all over the country. But they're controversial. They're easy to distort. They're easy to inflame. And with the added bonus from the point of view of the radical right wing in this country to have a black woman espousing this well, uh, you're going to see ads just like those old Willie Horton ads with, with criminals of color being featured on the screen. This is who Rachel Rollins and all the Democrats who voted yes on this nomination support. I guarantee you're going to see it. You certainly saw Ted Cruz try to associate and tie her to the defund the police movement. Absolutely, yeah. I know you addressed this in the very beginning, but if people are just joining us, yeah. next steps from this point on, you say she will be confirmed. Yeah, it goes to the Senate now uh, and for the final vote, and there is a partisan Democratic margin, albeit a very narrow one. I, I've heard nothing to believe that somehow it won't make it. Right. Uh, so then she'll be sworn in shortly thereafter as the U.S. Attorney. And it's interesting, that's quite a different job from being Suffolk County District Attorney. 
Uh, you get to cherry pick your prosecutions, and you, you saw the previous U.S. attorney, Andrew Lelling, for instance, choosing to go after political corruption cases. Uh, uh, Jazeel Correa, the mayor of Fall mm -hmm. River, being a good example. You saw him doing the Varsity Blues case, mm -hmm. which was you know, kind of came out of nowhere as far as I was concerned. So uh, she can shape her own agenda and... Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what that is. However, rather than being the kind of free agent that the Suffolk County DA, DA is, she has to answer to the Justice Department in Washington mm -hmm. and ultimately to the Biden administration. And it'll be real interesting to see if she's the fire-breathing reformer that we've seen in Suffolk County as U.S. Attorney or something different because of those other political considerations. Right. Okay. Well, John Keller, thank you so much for hopping on the desk and uh, My pleasure. breaking it all down for us and for the insight that you always give us. Thank you. All right. Well,